Hey there, my name is Andrew Brostansky and I'm a professional photographer based in Montreal and today we're going to be talking about the 40mm f2.8 Heliar Aspherical from Voigtlander. So before we begin, I'd like to thank Camtech for supplying the lens. I went there the other day to pick up some film and I saw this and the black paint version sitting on their counter. They had just gotten them like that afternoon. So I took it right away and took it for a few test shots and I've had it in my possession for the last week. And let me tell you, it's a wonderful little lens that I've been excited to try out for the last few years because this lens, this exact optical design, was released actually many years ago when the Voigtlander close focus adapter came out for the Sony E-mounts. And I really wanted to try that lens because it had glowing reviews. It's, it was super tiny and compact and that one actually is a collapsible lens. And I, uh, I never got around to it because A, it's hard to get and also it's very niche because I don't use my Sony cameras all that much outside of work. so. I figured, you know, it wasn't meant to be, but lo and behold, Voigtlander announced, announced these lenses uh, in the M mount and the uh, Leica thread mount, so that's really awesome. This is a really wonderful little lens. It's sharp as heck, and it is really, really beautiful. It renders lovely. It's a modern lens, so it has a, a warm feel to the images. Uh, it has a medium contrast, nice bokeh, plenty of sharpness, and great detail in transition areas. So your blacks aren't too black and your transition from your highlights to your mids are beautiful. This is a really, really nice lens. I, I'm, I love the way it draws. It feels like a little bit like a modern version of a 35 Sumeron. So I actually did compare these two. We're going to talk about that in a second. But before we begin, I just want to talk about the build quality. So it's got, uh, it's an f2.8 lens. It's got one spherical element from what I can tell. It's five elements in three groups. So very simple lens design. That's all it needs to be because it is a medium focal length. It doesn't really need to be a super complicated optical design. And sure enough, you have a wonderful sharp image as a result. So great, great little lens. And the build quality is really fantastic as you would expect from Voigtlander as of late. You know, really they've just been hitting home runs after home runs with their lenses and this is no exception. Then the lens itself has a push button tab, much like the screw mount lenses of yesteryear. It uh, focuses down to 0.7 meters, which is welcome. So push down on the button, it unlocks from infinity, and then you can focus with it. So it feels exactly like my 50 Summicron collapsible. Uh, same kind of throw as well. You're really pulling your finger out to the far extremes here, and it has a nice little old school lock for your focus, which is just a stick that pokes right out. One thing I did notice, and I couldn't find it in any of the Voigtlander literature or instructions online, but the tab itself threads and unthreads rather easily. So be warned, at least you know try to rotate it back into place when you can, because uh, it can fall out, but if you unthread it just a bit, okay, the lens will lock, bang, at two meters. So what that allows you to do is zone focus really easily if you're in the street. So check it out. I'll take the lens off. And that also helps with, you know, dismounting the lens. The tab, if you push down on the button and you rotate, see, it'll lock at this groove that they kind of machined out for the lens. So the, the mount itself isn't actually entirely circular. There's like a notch cut out. That, that little uh, point that sticks out will actually knock into it and stop you from focusing closer than around two meters. It's like 1.9 meters. Then you, you know, let go and it can keep sliding. But I ran into that a few times in the streets. Um, when I got used to it, I got used to it. But a few, the few times that it happened before me, you know, accounting for it, it got annoying because I would go up to somebody, get too close, and next thing you know, I realized, crap, I'm trying to focus it in the moment and I couldn't get closer than two meters. So I used my feet to back up a bit, but you know, kind of uh, an annoyance to be honest with you. Um, but I guess the more you use it, the more you get used to it. Otherwise the lens is nice and you know, well built, it's a really solid piece of metal. It's very light, you know, the very light lens. And uh, when you're walking around with it on your camera, your camera is actually gonna be back heavy. So your camera is actually gonna wind up having a tendency to go backwards. So on my M10, on my M3, and on my M2, I noticed that when I was walking around with it around my neck, that the camera itself was, you know, balancing towards the rear. 
So just, you know, something, something to notice because it's so light and there's no finder blockage at all. I could see the hood on my 0.72 mag viewfinder on my M2 just a bit. If I didn't have the hood, I would not see it at all. Framing for it, really easy. You just, you know, frame around the perimeters of a 50, a 50 millimeter frame lines that do pop up. Uh, otherwise, 10 aperture blades, as is custom for most Voigtlander lenses, they're always an even number, so you get nice sun stars. And this lens will produce sun stars starting at about, uh, well, 3.5, whatever the stop is between f4 and, and f2.8. And even f2.8, you can actually see a bit of it pick up in some street lights or whatever. But really nice, pleasing sun stars as I expected it to produce. Otherwise, your focus scale is here in meters and you have your aperture uh, to account for the scale as well on the lens barrel. Not like you're gonna be looking at it because it's so, you have to literally put your head over the camera to get a view of this. So you're not gonna be seeing it a lot. Um, another thing that I noticed while I was using it in the street is my finger had a tendency to slip and change the aperture. So there were a few times where I noticed I was shooting at f4 when I thought I was shooting at f2.8 only because when you go to reach for the, you know, the focus button, your finger can slip onto the aperture and change the aperture. A little annoyance, but once again, something that you get used to once you use the lens. Otherwise, well-built lens, no complaints at all. The hood threads on in a few, very few rotations. Uh, you can use it well without the hood. It has great flare resistance, but I personally liked it with the hood, um, just for safety and fingerprint reasons. Plus, it doesn't really look that bad with it on. Uh, the whole body of the lens does rotate while you focus, so you can't have a square hood on this guy. And to be honest with you, that's the only major downside of this lens for me is just the fact that the whole lens rotates because it comes with those problems that I talked about, like your finger changing the aperture accidentally. Would not really happen on any of my other lenses. The cap for the lens hood is a push on one made out of aluminum. Very simple, uh, seemingly aluminum at least, and uh, weighs nothing and you can leave it on when you're traveling with it. Uh, so I wound up uh, comparing this lens because I was, uh, from the get-go, I was very impressed by it. I also wanted to see how it would fare against my Nocton, which I don't really use that often, I'll be honest with you. It, um, it, although it's small, it's compact, and it is a very fast lens for what it is, there is a focus shift, and the rendering is kind of a bit too harsh for my liking. It has a blunt contrast and a kind of like a, it reminds me of like a Pentax lens, like for the K1000, the SMGs, SMCs, whatever they are. They, they render a bit warm and harsh, so you don't have a nice transition from, you know, your highlights to your mids and your mids to your shadows. So I find like this lens is kind of, you know, good on film on occasion for me. Otherwise, I don't really use it that much. And I found that comparing them, this with the 35 Sumeron, uh, they were all pretty good conform, uh, performers. The 2.8 has a lot of benefits. Uh, it's a spherical, it's the only spherical one out of this roster, and it's obviously a modern design. So the rendering is a little bit more cool. Uh, with that said, it's probably just the multi-coatings um, because the warms are a little bit more saturated. Is definitely This is definitely the most saturated lens of my bunch here. Uh, though it's sharp, it's sharper than the 40 Nocton, uh, especially across the frame. I would say this lens is, is a wonderful performer from edge to edge. In your corners, you do see a little tiny bit of smearing, but not a lot. It's, it's nothing like my 35 Sumeron, which has just crazy soft um, corners in the extreme corners. So sharper than the, than the Nocton, but very surprising and very impressive for the Sumeron. I'll be doing a review on this lens uh, in due time. This lens outperformed both of these lenses. It, the, the Sumeron is sharper than the other two here. So the Sumeron is 60 years old and it's actually outperforming these two. Freaking phenomenal. Stopping them down, they all get pretty close. The, uh, the biggest advantage that this guy has, the, uh, the Heliar has over the rest, is that it is sharp across the frame. So the Sumeron is sharp in the middle and then it kind of gets softer towards the edges at 2.8. Uh, same thing for the Nocton, but then the Heliar is, you know, tack sharp pretty much always across the frame. Uh, it's definitely sharper in the middle at wide at 2.8, but then as you stop down, it gets sharper across the board, and then the vignetting also dissipates really quickly. Um, then the Nocton, uh, you know, the vignette goes away, and you do have to deal with that focus shift. The Sumeron is sharp 2.8, then sharper across the frame at f4, and then f5.6 to f8 crazy sharp, like ridiculous. It outperforms the Heliar ever so slightly. 
and I did notice because I want, I'm really not comparing these guys for their sharpness per se. I really wanted to see how uh, the contrast compares because I love the 35 Sumeron and I was really curious to see if this medium contrast lens that, that is the Heliar was going to be close to the Sumeron in performance. So the Heliar has um, medium contrast, a lot of saturation and a great deal of a good punch. You know, it's got a nice, nice contrast to it. The 35 Sumeron has great optics, very little multi-coating applied to it. So it is coated, but it doesn't have modern coatings. Like it leans towards warmer reds and, uh, and very, very little saturation in the blues. And the Heliar is a little bit more pronounced in saturation across the board. So, so it's just to say though that the Heliar has a little bit more contrast than the Sumeron, so the Sumeron will actually give you more detail in your shadows than the Heliar. So not a big deal. I wasn't really expecting this lens to match the Sumeron's performance, but it's nice to see that the Heliar does have more detail in its shadows than I expected it to have, which translates into wonderful black and white imagery. So when I used this lens in the streets, I shot it on some Ilford XP2400, which is a C41 process film. So I just drop it off at Camp Tech. They develop it for me and I pick it up a few days later and we're good to go. Same thing for my other test roll that I put with this lens, which was Kodak Pro Image 100. Wonderful, wonderful lens on film. And that's where a lot of users are gonna be using it for. So let me tell you right away, it's really nice to use a lens that, that is this good on film. I really enjoy using modern lenses on film and then classic lenses on digital it's 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 nice to give some character to your imagery and this is a really fun experience it reminds me a lot of actually using my uh, 30 my, my 21 3.5 color scope bar on film as well as my 35 distagon on film it has that 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 kind of um that that, that, that need to impress yourself you know you're, you're not concerned about the optical performance at all, so you really can just enjoy the experience. And what this lens brings to the table is a very fun user experience. It's so small, it's so inconspicuous. You can take pictures on the go. People are not intimidated by this lens. And that is a huge, huge factor. It may be in your head because let's be real, Leica lenses are always small for the most part, but there's something really fun about how small this lens is. It just looks like a point and shoot camera when you have the lens on. And when you go up to people, you just, you feel vulnerable. It, it just takes another uh, piece of the equation out for you to just, you know, include yourself in the moment a little bit more. And I noticed that when I was doing my street photos, I was way less hesitant to approach people and ask them for their pictures with this setup. It's, it's definitely part of, you know, enjoying a new lens, but I did find myself, uh, you know, a little bit less shy than I would be with like a Distagon or a 50 millimeter. You know, you feel you know that you're gonna be doing the moment justice with this lens. So it's really small, it's unintrusive. There's no vignetting. There's hardly any vignetting to speak of, which is a really nice attribute. Also uh, for digital shooters, there's very little color fringing on it. I hardly noticed any. I did see some on some highlights or some clipping areas, but who cares? It's really negligible. Um, otherwise, the bokeh is really, really nice. And uh, not distracting at all. And there's actually a surprising amount of shallow depth of field to be had compared to the 35 Sumeron, which actually has a lot more field curvature than the 40 millimeter Heliar. Um, I did notice that the separation was pretty pronounced at 2.8. So, you know, a welcome surprise coupled with that uh, lack of vignetting, it gives you a nice big image. And I really got to enjoy the 40 millimeter focal length a whole lot more than I do with my Nocton because I guess partly to do with that vignetting, but also the fact that it is just so easy to use at 2.8. It's very welcoming and you know, the, 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 the performance is just right there out of the box at 2.8. I barely stopped this lens down unless I really had to. So for zone focusing, for example, it's a wonderful lens to use. You could just walk around and just use the tip of your finger to focus with it. And I did some street photography with it and it was really good at that. And I assume that a lot of people are gonna be using it for that. And it's a nice mix because you can frame 50 millimeters and have some bleed around it. Just if you're looking through the viewfinder and you're framing with this lens, just give yourself 10% bleed around the, the image uh, projected with the focal with the frame lines and that's all you need. Otherwise, I mean, really the experience has been just been a blast. Taking in the street was a total joy and it is um, a, a modern classic, if you will. It looks the part, let's be real, it looks so good on a chrome body or even on the black chrome M10, I found it looked really, really good on it. It's so small and so light, it doesn't cost a ton of money and it performs and punches definitely above its weight. So if you're curious about this lens, don't hold back. Let me tell you right away, 
I don't know if there's any lens in this price point that can come close to the performance this lens has to offer, coupled with its size. It's wonderful, it's so tiny. You can throw it in your lens bag, in your camera bag, and never even have to think about it. You can just whip it out whenever you need to. And I really don't think I've ever tried a lens at this price point that can perform this well. It's wonderful. It is a modern lens uh, with a lot of nice classic uh, charm to it. So low contrast, great saturation, wonderful sharpness without being harsh. Great for skin, um, and the bokeh is really, really nice. No, very little field curvature. There is field curvature, it, it, but it's not as distracting as the field curvature that you get from, let's say, the 35 Sumeron. So the 35 Sumeron did outperform the Heliar, but ever so, ever so slightly, and the Heliar is sharp from edge to edge with just very, ever so slightly, uh, you know, smearing in the top corners. I, didn't expect this lens to have the craziest performance in the corners, so it was, it was a very welcome surprise to see how good it is. And the colors and the pop this lens produces are really nice. It, it just, you know, it just like everything else that Voigtlander is pumping out right now, this lens is a banger. This thing just kicks butt. It is so good and it's so tiny. You can slip this entire camera setup into your pocket and walk around and it, literally, it's just such an easy lens to walk around with. And I think that's its biggest selling point. In the summer, you know, or traveling, you can walk around with your camera slung around your neck and not feel weighed down at all by this package. And you know that it's going to deliver because it produces such good imagery. It is really, really good. It's, it's, yeah, there's really not much to say. I was, I, I really just got to put the image uh, performance out of the equation when I use this lens and just enjoy the experience. It was really that good. I, I used it, picked it up, tried it for a few days on my M10 and I got used to it right away. And then putting on the M's, on my film, on my film M's with some film loaded, uh, wonderful. It's exactly what I expected to be and more. On the X-P2, the images are gorgeous. The contrast really comes out nicely. You can push and pull because with the, uh, the X-P2 and you can get some nice, nice results out of it underexposed overexpose, you're going to get a nice glow if you overexpose with it and your highlights are retained. So it's a really nice feeling because this lens does have a kind of a neutral signature on film. Same thing for color, wonderful colors uh, with my, you know, my favorite go-to cheap film now, which is the Kodak Pro Image 100. Wonderful. It really, ha it really reminds me a lot of a mix of, let's say, the Distagon and the 35 Sumeron. It's a nice in-betweener and I love that focal length so much. I, I hope this uh, answered some questions for you because I really, I can't suggest this lens enough, especially for the price. It's a wonderful, wonderful buy. It's so small. It, it really is a, in lib a liberating experience to use with your M's, I have to say, or your Barnack Leica's, right? Because if you get this for the LTM mount, it's going to be awesome on those cameras too. So that's it. If you're hesitating about 40 millimeters, don't. It's a wonderful in-between focal length. It, it has a lot less of that wide angle distortion that you get with 35 millimeters and you get, it, it feels like basically a wide 50 millimeter at the end of the day. That's what it is. It's a 50 millimeter with 10% more and that's what is really nice about it. I uh, become more and more of a 50 millimeter user as I go on and I found that this complements that style very, very nicely. So that's the Voigtlander 40 millimeter f2.8 Heliar. Wonderful performer, very inconspicuous lens. Uh, I guess it's gonna be the new pocket performer for the Leica M mount. I really don't see anything you know, coming close to this, especially for the price. So let me know what you think about this lens. If you have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and thank you for watching.